Hello, and welcome to the Candidate Ben Agent Briefing for North North Ants. My name is Sam Whiteley, and I'm the Deputy Interim Elections Manager for North North Ants. We're going to try and cover quite a bit in this briefing, including who the project team is, the key dates for the election, public health principles, something I am sure we are all thinking about carefully, nomination papers, campaigning, and the other topics you can see listed here. Rob Bridge is the returning officer for the North Northamptonshire Unitary Elections and the Town and Parish Council elections that fall under the North Northampton area. He's also the Police Area Returning Officer for the whole of Northamptonshire for the Police, Fire and Crime Commissioner election being held alongside these elections on the 6th of May. Adele Wiley and Martin Hammond are Rob's immediate deputies, with Martin acting as Count Manager. We've then got Heather Jackson, who is the Interim Electoral Services Manager for North North Ants, and me. There's also a lot of hard-working electoral administrators, many of whom you will know, who will be making sure that these elections are being run safely and legally, a phrase I am sure you will have heard more than once in the past few months. So to quickly run through the election itself. North Northamptonshire Council is made up of 26 wards, each electing three members, a total of 78 councillors. There are also 94 town and parish councils across North Northamptonshire, including new town councils for Corbyn, Kettering and Wellingborough. The notice of election will be published on the 25th of March, which will list the details of how and where to submit your nominations, but we'll cover that today as well. Nominations will be open from 25th of March until 4pm on the 8th of April, which is also the deadline for appointing election agents. The Statement of Persons Nominated, which is the notice that lists all of the candidates for all of the elections being held, will be published on the following day. Electors may register to vote up until midnight, technically 11.59, on the 19th of April inclusive. Electors may apply for a postal vote up until 5pm on the 20th of April, and proxy votes a week later on the 27th. The Notice of Poll and Situation of Polling Stations Notice will be published on the 27th of April. 28th of April is the deadline for appointing counting and polling agents. As ever, electors can apply for emergency proxy votes up until 5pm on polling day, Thursday the 6th of May. And this year, alongside the medical emergency and employment reasons, electors will be able to apply for an emergency proxy on the grounds of a COVID diagnosis, exhibition of symptoms or advice to self-isolate. The return of elections expenses is 35 calendar days after the declaration of result. For unitary elections, this is likely to be Friday the 11th of June 2021. I'm sure that you would have thought, all thought about COVID considerations, but there are some general public health principles that we'll be asking you to follow. Please maintain all social distancing guidelines, clean your hands regularly, avoid touching your face, wear face coverings where appropriate. I am sure this goes without saying, but if you are genuinely unwell or symptomatic with a confirmed case of or a confirmed contact of someone who is self-isolating, then please do not attend any electoral events. Moving on to nominations. Due to a change to legislation for these unitary elections, you will only be required to obtain a proposer and a seconder for each nomination. The nomination form, home address form and consent to nomination must be submitted by no later than 4pm on the 8th of April for each candidate. Any candidate for a political party must also provide a certificate of authorisation from the party and an optional form for the candidate to use a party emblem. There's a full in-depth nomination video which will be available separately. We're going to be providing an informal check service online, so you can simply scan your nomination forms to one of the email addresses on screen now and an officer will let you know if your papers are ready for formal submission or if there's any changes needed. The nomination form, home address form and consent to nominations must be delivered by hand. So we'll be offering virtual informal checks but we'll still need the forms to be formally submitted by hand. Let's talk about agents. Election agents are appointed for principal area elections, which in this case means the North Northamptonshire Council elections. Parish candidates won't be able to appoint an agent. Agents are responsible for the management of the election campaign, in particular the campaign finances. Agents must be appointed by 4pm on the 8th of April, the same deadline for nominations. There's a form to appoint agents included in the relevant nomination pack available from the Electoral Commission website. If you don't appoint an agent, you become your own agent by default. Please bear in mind that a notice of election agents is published, so if you're acting as your own agent and choose to suppress your home address, it may still be made public on the notice of election agents. There's some more information on this in our nominations video. 
You or your candidates can also appoint some other agents to attend specific events, including postal vote openings, polling stations and the verification and count. The deadline for appointing polling and counting agents is the 28th of April. You may appoint postal vote agents to attend a specific session, but they just need to be appointed before that session starts. Candidates and agents will receive 48 hours notice of the dates, times and locations of postal vote opening sessions. You will receive forms to appoint these other agents once your nomination has been formally accepted. As a candidate, you will have access to certain documents, specifically the electoral register and the absent voters list. You get access to these once you become a candidate, or if you or others have declared that you are a candidate. So if it's the 29th of March and you haven't yet submitted your nomination papers, but you are declaring yourself to be a candidate, you can request a copy of the register for the ward that you're standing in from the relevant elections office. These requests must be made in writing and there are request forms available from the Electoral Commission. You can only use this data for specific purposes, helping to complete the nomination form, getting the correct elector numbers, helping you to campaign and checking that donations and loans are permissible. If you're a parish candidate, then you may be able to ask your parish clerk for the elector numbers as many of them receive regular updates to the register. So we're just going to cover over some do's and don'ts. Please make sure that you're following all of the COVID-19 guidelines, being mindful of both national and local restrictions. Make sure all of your campaign materials include imprints, including any websites or social media profiles. Comply with all of the planning rules around advertising hoardings and large banners. Make sure any outdoor posters are removed within two weeks of polling day. Do not produce any material that looks like a poll card or could otherwise mislead voters into thinking it is material generated by the returning officer. Please do not pay anyone to display your adverts unless they do so as a normal part of their business. Don't ever touch a ballot paper unless it's your own or if you're acting as proxy for someone. This is critical with postal ballot papers. Don't observe electors who are completing their postal vote. Postal votes are secret, and if you observe someone completing it, you should treat it the same as if you were peering over their shoulder in a polling booth. As a candidate or agent, you must not handle or take any completed ballot papers or postal ballot packs from voters. Just advise the electors where the postal voting packs can be returned, or tell them to hand it in at a relevant polling station. Speaking of polling stations, you can put your messages to voters on a polling day, including public areas around polling places, but you must ensure that access to stations and the areas around them, including pavements, remain clear. Be especially mindful of tellers alongside COVID-19 restrictions. Ensure social distancing is maintained and that tellers don't move around to get information from electors. If tellers are standing in the way, not following the rules or otherwise impeding voters, then the presiding officer have been instructed to move tellers on, or your tellers may get a visit from one of our polling station inspectors or the returning officer. I am sure that you will be too busy on polling day to be dealing with calls from the elections office about your tellers. We have made arrangements to ensure the polling stations are safe and COVID secure. Measures against COVID-19 have been in place for some time and we're all used to following them. Elections are no different. Assuming that the Police, Fire and Crime Commissioner and unitary wards are all contested, each polling station will have at least two ballot boxes. In certain circumstances, there may be a third. Floor markings will be in place to ensure social distancing is clear and visible and hand sanitizer will be provided to every station. It is expected that face coverings or visors will be worn at all times unless exemptions to wearing them apply. Voters will also be encouraged to bring their own pen or pencil to the poll, but pencils will still be made available. Candidates or agents should encourage electors to check their poll card information prior to polling day for accuracy as some polling stations may have changed. Polling day itself will follow all of the usual procedures, with stations open from 7am to 10pm. Any registered voters who are in a queue at 10 o'clock, which may be more likely at these elections given the restrictions around COVID-19, will be able to apply for a ballot paper. Postal votes can be handed in to stations up until 10pm, and if an elector is queuing to do so, they may do after 10pm, but the postal vote must be handed in to a relevant polling station. That means a polling station within the specific North Northamptonshire ward or parish where appropriate. There may be more polling stations in certain venues than you're used to seeing, alongside some potentially unfamiliar locations as electoral administrators have worked hard to identify appropriate venues and keep disruption to schools to a minimum. All polling day queries should be addressed to the relevant satellite electoral services office. Do not ask staff in polling stations or elections offices for turnout information as this will not be provided. 
Okay, so polling day is now over and there have been no issues throughout the day. Everyone has behaved themselves, all electors who have wished to vote have been able to do so and we've hit 10 p.m. What happens next? Presiding officers and poll clerks will be packing away their polling station and doing their end of day paperwork before heading to their verification centres. Verification at these elections will be held remotely. That is to say that there will be four separate verification venues listed on screen here. Serious adaptations have been made to the verification and the count in light of the ongoing public health concern. As a result, verification and the count may take longer because of the measures taken to ensure the safety of staff and observers. Verification will begin as soon as ballot papers have been received from polling stations, including all unused and spoiled ballot papers. All ballot papers will be verified face up. No papers are rejected during the verification process. Verification is double checking that the numbers of papers that the presiding officer has issued tallies with the number of papers in the ballot boxes. The candidate and agent are both entitled to attend this process for transparency and scrutiny. Agents can be appointed to attend verification, but this will depend on the local centre. You will be notified of how many agents you can appoint at a later date. A final post vote opening session will also be taking place for those packs handed in at polling stations. This may not be at the same site that verification is taking place. Once verification is completed, the ballot papers will be boxed up and stored securely, ready for the relevant count. All counts will be taking place at Kettering Conference Centre. The count for North Northamptonshire Council will be taking place on Friday the 7th of May. Town and parish councils and neighbourhood planning referendums will be counted on Saturday the 8th of May. The Police, Fire and Crime Commission account will take place on Monday the 10th. All papers at the count will be sorted and counted face up, with the count broken down into mini counts by ward. Firstly, the postal votes and polling station ballot papers will be mixed and then the count will begin across wards. Details and process will be confirmed closer to the time. Candidates, agents, counting agents and one other person appointed by the candidate are entitled to attend the count, but COVID-19 restrictions may limit the number of agents and guests in order to maintain social distancing and health measures. We're just going to move on to campaign expenses. So campaign expenses are the responsibility of the election agent. Spending limits are £806 plus 7 pence per elector in the ward who appears on the register in force on the 25th of March 2021, the date for notice of election. This spending limit is reduced for joint candidates. Please ensure that receipts for spending are obtained and retained if over £20. Spending returns are due to be submitted 35 calendar days after the result has been declared. Assuming all unitary counts are completed on Friday the 7th of May, this means that the spending return must be submitted by Friday the 11th of June 2021. Spending returns are available for public inspection and sample returns may be reviewed by the Electoral Commission. Two final key points on spending. No spending is reimbursed. Your submission of your spending return does not mean that we will be paying for your campaign. And failure to submit a spending return is a criminal offence, so make sure that you get them in by the deadline. Finally, we have a list of contacts for the relevant electoral areas or satellite offices in North Northamptonshire. If you have any questions, then please don't hesitate to contact any of the people listed here.